Hello, Bobby Torres of Frightbox Recording here, and let's talk a little bit about submixes or submixing. So before we dive into today's tutorial, let's talk a little bit about what a submix or what submixing is if you're not familiar with the term or how it works within your DAW or even if you're mixing on an analog console. A subgroup or a submix is when you take a group of instruments and you send them to their own dedicated output that's pre-master fader. And what's great about this is you have more control. So for example, if you want to adjust all of your drums at once, or maybe all of your guitars, all of your vocals, all of your background elements at once, you could do this on the subgroup or the submix, which again will then be sent to your master output. Now submixing and subgroups are phenomenal when it comes to organization within your DAW or even on the analog console, and also when it comes down to efficiency and control within the mixing process. They allow you to make global moves and global adjustments, as well as just keep your session nice and tidy. Now, I've decided to put this simple tutorial together because after interacting with so many subscribers and even students of mine, I've noticed that most people tend to either overcomplicate submixes and submixing, or they don't utilize it enough within their productions. So without any further ado, here is my simple approach to submixing within my own productions, uh, and hopefully you can take something from this and apply them to your own work. Let's dive in. All right, so here we are within my DAW, and I first wanna talk a little bit about how I approach vocal submixing. So I have a sample here by my good friends in a band called Poeta. I will leave a link below uh, to their music within this video's description. And uh, let's listen to the sample, and I'll talk a little bit about how I approach vocal submixing in my mixes in general. Let's take a listen. Okay, if you notice, I have a bunch, a bunch of vocal tracks. Uh, they all have their own processing within each of the individual uh, tracks themselves. But here's the deal. All of these vocal tracks are being sent to this submix. Now I'm using Pro Tools. In Pro Tools, you have to set up auxiliary tracks. If you're using another DAW, they might call it something different. For example, a group track or something of that nature. Now, if you're a Reaper user, which we're gonna cover in the next instrument for drums, uh, Reaper, you could do it through sends or you can create folder tracks, which I'm gonna show you again in the next section uh, of this tutorial where I go over drums. But again, I'm using Pro Tools for this mix and all of these tracks, all these vocal tracks are being sent to this single subgroup. And then the subgroup is being sent directly to my master fader. This serves two purposes. One, it keeps things nice and organized. And I know all of my vocals are coming through a vocal submix. So if I wanna create any global adjustments as far as volume, all I have to do is adjust this fader. And more importantly, in this specific mix, I can then apply processing globally to all of the vocal tracks at once. In this case, I have a little bit of a console emulator, a little bit of saturation, and some global EQ, which I actually bypassed in this particular mix. This is infinitely better than having all of your vocal tracks going directly to the two bus, which honestly, sometimes I do if I only have you know two, three, or four vocal tracks. But in this case, I have so many that this just makes it a lot easier. For example, in this case, I wanted to apply saturation to all the vocal tracks globally, and all I need to use is one plugin. And also, it saves on CPU. So instead of me having to put saturation on each of the individual vocal tracks, I have it all here on my simple stereo vocal submix. So that's an example of how I generally will set up a vocal submix. Let's now jump into Reaper and I'll show you how I approach my drum submix. And let me just say this, it doesn't matter what I'm using, Logic, Reaper, the DAW is irrelevant. The process is exactly the same. I'm just mimicking an analog workflow of how I would mix if I were working on an analog console using submixes. All right, so now I'm in Reaper. 
uh, with a completely different mix, a uh, completely different song. And fun fact, the song you are about to hear was mixed completely using only Reaper stock plugins. So side note there, you don't need to use third-party plugins to achieve a professional sounding mix. Uh, let's take a listen to the mix and I'll talk about my drum routing and submix process within Reaper. But again, this can be applied to any DAW. I wanted to use multiple DAWs within this tutorial just to prove my point. Let's take a listen. Okay, so this is a little more involved than the last submix that I shared in the last mix, but the philosophy and the concept is exactly the same. Uh, in this case, I have my individual drum tracks in Reaper. If you look here, I have my kick, snare, kick sample, snare sample, uh, overheads, toms, cymbals, all that good stuff. They are being routed to their own individual submixes. So for example, my cymbals have their own submix. My shells have their own submix, meaning the kick, snare, and toms. And then the submixes in this case, meaning the cymbals, the drum submix, as well as the parallel compression, is being sent to a drum master, which is then being sent to a drum stem, which in a sense is just a drums submix. So in this situation, I have groups going into groups. But here's the important thing to remember. It's all about organization, as well as making processing easier. And let me dive just a little deeper just to show you what I mean. So here I have my drum submix, which I'm sending a little bit of signal to a parallel compression bus. It's just parallel compression that's blended in. But the key takeaway here is both of these tracks are being sent to my drums master, and then the drums master is being sent to the drum stem. All of these tracks are my cymbals, and they're being sent to my drums cymbal submix, and then the cymbal submix is being sent to my drum stem. So in this situation, my drum stem is the ultimate submix for all of my drums. It might seem complicated, but here's what you have to remember. I'm sending all of my drum tracks to their own unified submix. And in Reaper, I'm using the folder system. I'm using folders. It's the exact same concept as what I shared earlier in Pro Tools. I'm just taking tracks, grouping them together and sending them to their own unified output which is then being sent to the master bus. Now, if this is confusing to you and you would like a simple, quick reference that you could refer to when creating submixes within your DAW, I've got something I think you're gonna like. And that is my submixing PDF cheat sheet. It's a super straightforward, single page PDF cheat sheet that breaks down how I approach submixing within my DAWs. And I've also included detailed notes for each specific instrument group to help guide you along when creating submixes within your DAW, regardless of the DAW you're using. The PDF cheat sheet is absolutely free and there's a link below in this video's description. You could have direct access to it right now. So there you have it. That's how I approach drum submixing, at least for this genre of music where I have a lot going on. And now let's talk a little bit about guitar submixing. Okay, here I am back in Pro Tools and uh, I have an audio sample here and I'm gonna break down how I approach in general uh, submixing my heavy guitar tracks. Let's take a listen. Okay, so in general, I like to submix all of my rhythm guitar tracks together within my productions. Now, if I'm doing a more simple production where there are less guitar tracks, maybe a rock production or even a live recording, sometimes I'll create a submix for all of my guitar tracks. But the reason why I'm specifying a specific submix for my rhythm guitars is for the following reasons, EQ, and multiband compression. So for example, in this case, I have a main guitar tone, which is a 5150, mic'd up with an SM57, uh, with a Mesa Boogie Cat, V30 speakers. Let's take a listen. Super simple. There's no EQ or processing on the individual tracks. But in this mix, I wanted some additional clarity. So I'm also blending in the clean DI tracks. Again, these are not a re-recording, this is not an overdub, this is the exact same performance on the left and right. I'm just blending two different sounds together and the additional sound is as follows. Just a clean guitar to add extra clarity and the clean guitars have their own processing on them, but I wanted to treat 
all four guitar tracks, even though there's really only two performances, one on the left, one on the right, as one sound. And that's where using a guitar submix comes in handy. So all four of these tracks are being sent to my guitar submix, and my guitar submix is being sent to my master bus. And again, I can compress them all at once. In this case, I'm using a multiband compressor just to clamp down on the palm mutes, and I'm EQing all of my guitar tracks in one go. And again, just to show you, my main guitars have no EQ on them whatsoever. The reason why I'm processing the clean sounds independently is because I'm only using them for the mid range and I'm filtering out all the low end and top end. But again, I wanted to EQ my main guitars all in one go. And these two are just additional guitar tracks that are part of that main sound. And then finally, the other benefit of subgrouping uh, my rhythm guitars or submixing my rhythm guitars is when I apply volume automation and I have a bunch in this mix. As you can see here, a ton of volume automation to help bring out some of the more technical aspects of the riffing. Uh, it's much easier to automate a single bus or a single fader or a single track than have to go in there and automate all four of these guitar tracks independently. Remember to me, they are all one sound, they're all one unit, so why not treat the volume automation all as one unit? So there you have it, that's my straightforward approach to submixing. So as you can see, my approach to submixing and submixes is so straightforward and so simple when you really look at it. It makes my workflow so much more efficient, so much cleaner, so much easier. And this is important for me when I'm working on a high volume of different mixes, or even if I'm working on a single mix. So my question is this, I would love to hear your opinion. Are you currently using submixes within your own mixes? Or is this something that you haven't yet utilized yet within your workflow. Also, do you tend to overcomplicate submixing when you have, you know, like 20 different submixes within your production? Let me know by leaving a comment in the comment section below. I'd love to hear your opinion. And again, you could download my submixing cheat sheet. It's a simple one page PDF guide that lays out my simple approach to submixing as well as notes for each of the individual submixes within my own productions that you could apply to your own mixes. You could print it out, keep it on your desk, or refer to it right within your computer or on your tablet or phone. It's absolutely free and there's a link below in this video's description where you can access the download. If you found this video helpful, like, comment, subscribe, and share. And do not forget to click the little bell icon so you can be notified every time I upload little weekly videos on all things metal and rock production. If you're interested in some Frightbox swag, I've got t-shirts, mugs, and a ton of other cool stuff on the way. There's a link below to the Frightbox merch store in this video's description. Until next time, happy mixing.